Hello, welcome YouTubers. In this lesson, we are going to hook up the table view element so that it can display data. Just to give you a quick recap, in the previous lesson, we added the table view element to the storyboard. We created a prototype cell, gave it the identifier called message cell. We exposed that table view to the view controller.swift um, and we called it message table view to reference that element that we added in the storyboard. In order to hook up the table view, we're going to need to understand a concept called delegates and protocols, which I cover as a separate lesson in the full beginner course that I have on the site. But in the brief time that we have in this YouTube lesson, I'm going to explain it in addition to hooking up the table view as well. So hopefully you guys can follow along. So the way that the table view displays data is that it's got two properties, one called the delegate and one called the data source. And it doesn't care who that is, but it's going to call certain methods on that delegate or on that data source. And it's going to ask that delegate for, like I mentioned before, it's going to ask it for a, a cell to display data. And then it's going to ask its data source for data to display. So what we want to do is we want to set this view controller as that delegate and as that data source so that the table view ends up asking the view controller for that cell and for that data to display because inside the view controller we're going to have that data and we're going to create those cells and we're going to tell the table view here you go you know here's the data to display and here's the uh, here's the cell that I created for you to use um, so right now we got to hook those connections up and the way we do that is up here we're going to write comma ui table view delegate comma ui table view data source what this does is it specifies that this view controller class conforms to the ui table view delegate protocol and the ui table view data source protocol what that means is that we're specifying that the view controller will have the methods associated with the delegate and with the data source. So the table view can call those methods. The next thing we have to do is in the view did load method, we're going to say self dot message table view dot delegate equals self and self dot message table view dot data source equals self. What did we just do here? Well, we set the view controller, which is referred to by self as the delegate for the table view. And we set the view controller as the data source of the table view. And we're able to do that because we specified here that the view controller conforms to these two protocols. Now this concept of delegates and protocols is one of the hardest things for beginners to understand. And it's one of those things where after you get it, it becomes really simple. But the first time you hear about it, it takes a really long time for you to wrap your head around. And I have a full lesson in the beginner course dedicated to explaining through diagrams uh, and different examples what delegates and protocols are. So don't worry if you're confused still about you know what I'm doing and how this is hooked up. Uh, because this is probably the first time you've heard about it. And I'm going to add a link below the video for you to do a more reading on it. Or if you guys do join the full beginner course, then you can, uh, you can watch that lesson there. But just know that what we've done here is we've basically set the view controller as the table views delegate and the table views data source. So when the table view asks for a uh, cell to display data and asks for the data to display, it's going to ask the view controller. And now we're going to add some of those methods associated with these two protocols up here. These are the methods that the table view is going to call. And that's where we're going to create that cell and return that data. Okay, so let's say type table view uh, cell for row at index path. So in this method, the table view is asking for a cell 
for a particular row. Okay. Next, down here, type table view. Uh, scroll down to number of rows in section. And in here, it expects us to return to give it the information how many rows are there in total. Okay, right now we don't have any data. So up here, let's create an array that is going to hold our data. So let's say var messages array is an array of string is going to be an empty array at first. And you should have learned about arrays in the start here section, which you can find on my channel page. So now in this method, number of rows and section, we can say return messages array dot count. This is this count property is the number of items inside this array and return is basically fulfilling this part of the method. So the table view is going to call this method on the view controller and expect a return value. And we're going to return this value to the table view. Uh, you can see here is that is the data type that it expects back and count is the same data type it expects an integer or a number. So at this point, because our array is empty, this count is going to be zero and our table view isn't really going to show anything. So inside the view did load, let's just add some sample data to our messages array. So I'm going to put add some sample data so that we can see something. Okay, so we're going to add some sample data type messages array. Actually, let's use self dot append test one. Actually, before I move on, uh, a lot of people ask why I use self here or do you need it or when do you need to use self and when you don't. Uh, so self just refers to the view controller in this case because you're writing code inside the view controller class. When you use the self keyword, it just refers to the view controller. So because the view controller's got this property here called messages array, um, I just I like to use self dot messages array. You don't have to uh, because it's going to look for that property um, inside this class first. If it can't find it, then you'll see a squiggly red line and an Xcode error. Uh, but I like to use self. It's just I think it's a preference. It is a little more verbose. You're typing more uh, more text, but I feel like it's a little more clear. It's, it comes down to preference. I'm gonna add a couple of sample items here. I've got an extra bracket there. Okay, so now we can implement this method, cell for row at index path. And also it's got a return type of UI table view cell. So the table view is going to ask the view controller, it's gonna call this method and it's gonna expect the view controller to return a UI table view object back. So what we gotta do is create a table cell, customize the cell, return the cell. Okay, and the table view element is actually very smart. So if it has a reusable cell that it can reuse, um, it's going to use that so it doesn't spend resources to create a brand new cell. So what you can do is say, let cell equals the self.message table view, or you can just use this parameter right here, but I'm just going to refer to this property that we used or that we specified dot DQ reusable cell with identifier, this one right here, and we can pass in the identifier, which is message cell. Remember, this is the identifier we gave the prototype cell, right? So this method is basically going to grab a message cell to reuse. And if there's no such cell to reuse, it's going to create a brand new one for us. 
and we got to say as UI table view cell because it doesn't know what type of cell is going to be returned. Um, but that prototype cell is just a basic UI table view cell. Customize it. Like I said, the basic prototype cell has a label that we can use, and that's the text label property. Uh, type question mark dot text equals, and here we can put, um, we can basically look into this array and we can assign the text in the array to the label. But which piece of text do we assign? Well, this index path parameter specifies which row the table view is asking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to say self dot messages array. And we're going to specify an index in here, which uh, dictates which piece of text is going to be grabbed. So zero is going to be test one. Um, the index one is going to access test two and the index two is going to access test three because the array starts at zero, but we're going to pass in index path dot row. Okay. And this question mark is something that's called optional chaining. I don't want to confuse you guys, but the cell dot text label property is an optional type. And this is something I explain in the beginner course as well, but it's an optional type, which means that it could exist and it could not exist. Um, by putting a question mark here and then accessing the text property, it's a safe way to assign something or to access that property. If the text label happens to not exist, then we won't get a crash. The last thing we want to do is use the return keyword and return the cell. So that's it. Uh, it may seem very, very complicated just to get this table view working, but trust me, in every app that you do where you're displaying data, you, chances are you'll be using a table view and this is going to become second nature to you just because you're doing it so much. And once you understand the concepts of delegates and protocols, it's not going to seem confusing at all. It'll actually make a lot of sense. So now let's hit command and R and run it and see what our handiwork looks like. Okay, so we've got our table view here. Uh, we could have probably added more of a margin at the top, but you can see our three items here. Uh, test one, test two, and test three. And there's our little dock that we're going to put our text field and button in. Uh, but there we go. We can see that our table view is working. That's all I wanted to do for today. It's probably a lot to absorb for you guys. Um, if you're if this is the first time that you're exposed to delegates and protocols and table views in general. But just to give you guys a quick recap again on how this code is working, we have a table view element in our storyboard right here. And the way that the table view displays data is it calls the number of rows in section method and the self or row at index path method on its delegate and data source. And it doesn't care what is assigned there. It's just going to call those methods um, on its delegate and data source. So what we're doing, we're assigning the view controller as the table views delegate and data source so that the table view will call those methods on the view controller so we can write some code to return that data and to return that cell. The only way we can assign the view controller as the table views delegate and data source is to specify that it conforms to this, these two protocols, the UI table view delegate protocol and the UI table view data source protocol. Now, by specifying the view controller conforms to these two protocols, we're forced to implement these two methods, this number of rows and section method and the self or row at index path method. If we remove these two methods, Xcode actually will complain that it's, there's an error. It's going to say that, hey, you're saying that the view controller conforms to these protocols, but you haven't implemented the methods which the table view needs to, needs to call. So the whole point of the, this system, this protocols and delegate system, is so that two classes can communicate with each other without really knowing about each other. See, in this case, the table view doesn't care what is assigned to its delegate or data source as long as the delegate 
and data source has the methods that it needs to call, that's all that matters. Um, so that's the beauty of it. Um, let's look at what else we've done here. In the self a row at index path method, we are trying to dequeue a reusable cell with the identifier called message cell. And this goes back to our storyboard where we created this prototype cell here and we named it here uh, message cell. If we had added additional elements into this cell, we would also be able to reference them in, in here uh, and then assign them and you know modify anything we need to. But all we're doing here is we're grabbing uh, the index of the message array, which the table view is asking for. This parameter index path has a row property, which tells us which row the table view is asking for. And we're just returning that piece of text. Uh, and finally, the table view will also ask for the number of items that it needs to display. And we're just returning the messages array dot count. All right, so that's the beginnings of our little chat app here. Uh, in the next video, we're going to add the text field so the user can type stuff. We're going to add a button and we're going to hook up the animation so that it slides up along with the keyboard that slides up on your phone. Uh, and then probably in a couple lessons down, we're going to implement the saving and the retrieving of the actual messages from Parse. All right, I'll see you guys next time. And if you want to get a firmer grasp on these concepts, be sure to check out the full beginner course on my site. I assure you it's well worth it. I'll see you guys next time. Bye for now.